Okay, traders, before I go any further, can you guys just give me a quick test of picture and sound? I just want to make sure that you can hear my voice and you can see the screen. Just give me a Y in the chat box if you got a good connection and uh, everything as well. Thanks, Keith, Christian, Al. Good to see you, Bob, Ernest, Gary, Joaquin, John, Gary. Nice to see you guys. Excellent. Um, first and foremost, uh, thanks for being here. Uh, we, we've been looking forward to having this event for uh, some time. And uh, I just want to start things off, obviously, just with a quick introduction of what the barometer is designed for uh, in terms of our product suite. The, the, the thing with NeuroStreet is our primary focus is running our trading schools uh, in terms of the trade rooms and the educational arms. And we also have uh, sophisticated add-ons that, that we make available for our software suite. So today's event has actually been put together as a result of the, I guess you would say the request of many emails. Um, we've done a lot of webinars over the past and we've had some people email in about, you know, how come you haven't done any webinars on the add-ons and we'd like to see them. And, and so that's exactly uh, what we're doing today. We're going to be doing an add-on event and the barometer is ultimately a very, a very, uh, good tool to be adding to any trading system. So if you are a market profile trader, the barometer would be a great addition to that system. If you are a supply and demand and order flow trader, it'd be a great add on to that system. If you're somebody that's not even trading any of our strategies, the barometer is an amazing tool to add on to your system because the design of it is, is for forecasting uh, market internals and multi time frame directional sentiment. And we're going to spend a lot of time uh, going into that today and showing some examples. But before we go any further, just a couple housekeeping notes. We are recording the event. We will distribute the recording. And ultimately, if you have questions, please type them in the chat box. I will uh, spend time at the end of the event for Q&A. If I don't get to the question during the, the webinar, don't uh, take offense. It's not that I'm ignoring them. It's just I want to stay on topic so that we can carry on and move forward. And so uh, I need to cover a quick disclaimer just so you know uh, that there are risks associated with trading. Please take a second, look at this, and then we will move forward. So before I go into the agenda, is there anybody in here that has had a chance to look at what the barometer is? And I always like to ask that. Is there anybody in here that has either watched the videos on the website, um, maybe seen it in a demonstration previously, uh, or if you're completely new to it, just type the word new. Uh, I'd like to know uh, the exposure uh, in the room. It helps me gauge uh, the audience a bit better. If you're, if you're completely new to what the barometer is or if you're, if you're somebody that has looked on the website, perfect. So we've got a lot of people saying that it's new. Excellent. I'm going to introduce my team. I want to talk about a struggle and the solution. The struggle is deciding what to do on the hard right edge of your charts when looking at market internals. The solution is that we built an algorithm that is an add-on to every strategy. And what's really important here is that it's used for specific things, right? Like, like when you buy a software tool or you use an indicator, we need to understand what that purpose is. And so when we built the, the barometer, it was built for a specific purpose. It wasn't built to be a full-blown trading system. It wasn't built to be something that is just by itself the only way you should be trading. It is made as an add-on. And an add-on is basically designed to enhance your ability to trade other strategies, if you will. And the reason for that is it looks at two things. It looks at directional sentiment and market internals. And it's all done through essentially a nice uh, custom graphics dial. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it gives you the ability to uh, use it as kind of like a thermometer, if you will, or a barometer, a, a weather barometer, right? So good example is, is that, you know, if you were a, if you were somebody that was navigating your course uh, as in, in a boat, you would use a barometer for the weather. You would use a barometer for, for climate conditions. For trading, we use a barometer to, to give us internal sentiment on stuff that is not really related to the normal strategies in which you trade, right? It's why it's an add-on. But what's nice about it is that there is an internal strategy that can be used as an enhanced feature. And we, you've probably heard the term arbitrage before. I call this the hidden gem because in using the internal data for the, the add-on, 
it actually has an opportunity for you to exploit arbitrage opportunities in the market where you would normally never know they're existing or about to happen. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about that in a moment. Um, we do have a, a demo I'm gonna do on some different markets, and then ultimately what I'd like to do is also give you an opportunity to um, to save some money and and get some additional bonuses. So um, because this is obviously a, a webinar we have never done in a long time, uh, we we opened up some discounts and and stuff. So hopefully you know that helps you guys at the end. So that being said, for those of you that are new to Neural Street, if you're joining us for the first time, my name is Sean Kozak. I am the president of the company. Michael on the left, he's the educator that we have for supply and demand and order flow. Myself and then Raul is ultimately the market profile uh, educator for our market profile trade rooms. Ashley in the back end with Ben uh, for marketing and support. Okay, so obviously if you have any questions or you need to speak to our team at any time, just let us know. Let's get into it. There's a problem in the market and that's anxiety. And, uh, you know, I'm assuming that everybody here has had anxiety uh, with trading and, and normally it has to do with understanding what's about to happen in the market, whether you're going to trade the hard right edge, um, if you're trying to forecast information. Normally, a lot of traders have to make decisions around directional bias. Uh, a lot of times we'll use volume studies, we will use range studies or volatility based studies. But the biggest hurdle that we always have is, you know, somehow trying to understand what is about to happen, right? Because we all have an opinion about what we think is happening and, and what could happen, but the market doesn't care about those opinions. The market ends up reacting to the sub part of its involvement. So if there's a lot of movement, it's because there's lots of directional sentiment on supply and demand. If there's a lot of volume, it's usually because of certain reasons, right? Certain things dictate what happens in the market. And our job as financial traders is to understand that and be able to expand on our decision-making process. Now, the reason I label this as a problem is because it can be quite hard sometimes when we think we know is about to happen and we have a good idea of what we can expect to happen, but then we don't really know how to quantify that, right? It's, it's kind of how do we quantify what to expect in the market? And so that's exactly why I wanna ask you a question, okay? If you could just answer in the chat box and, and, and you know, what do all of these have in common, right? I've got a volume chart on crude oil. I've got a, a Renko chart on the Euro. I've got a range chart on gold and I've got a minute chart on the NASDAQ. They're all completely different markets and completely different fractals. What do all of them have in common? And, and, and maybe if you guys could just put a couple answers in the chat box, maybe you'll, <laughs> you'll, um, you know, you'll be able to answer that. Whether it's correct or not, it's not important. I just want to kind of see maybe where your head's at or what you're thinking. Christian says choppy price action, maybe sideways. Okay. Uh, anybody else have an opinion on that? Uh, yeah. To me, the answer is, if, as under says volatility, Noel says where to look next. John says direction. Okay. So, Gray background, green bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They all have something in common. That's a good one. The truth of the matter is, is that they all are driven by liquidity, uh, which is volume. They're all driven by movement, which is the distance and tick direction. And they all have what we call an unforeseen disadvantage. Nobody knows what's about to happen. Nobody really knows. We just know that we will know once it happens. And that creates anxiety. And that's why we built the barometer, because we wanted a way for us to quantify what was happening in terms of market, market sentiment and internal directional, uh, internal, internal factors. So let me kind of explain this. We have the ability to take two of the most important parts of trading, which is sentiment of direction and market internals and we bring it together. And the nice part about directional sentiment is, is that it really depends on many factors. You know, some people will trade on small time frames, medium time frames, large time frames. Some people are looking at volume, some people are looking at range or volatility, the speed of the market. We took it all and we merged it into what we call a barometer. And the barometer is designed to do it all in one custom graphics interface. And the purpose for the barometer 
is to tell us what the very small time frames are doing, what the medium time frames are doing, what the big time frames are doing, and then also give us a gauge of volume, volatility, and range. So let me just grab a cursor here for a second. Over here, you're going to see this is like a dial. And this is the large time frame. This is the medium time frame. And this is the micro time frame. Okay. Over here, we have what we call internals. And what these internals are doing is they're looking at volume, volatility, and range. And you'll notice that they're on different scales. Like this is at up to, goes up to 200, this goes up to 100, this goes up to 100. There's a reason for that, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But what's nice to know here is that we're, we're, we're able to do many different things by looking at one graphical interface. Instead of having, let's say, three different charts with different time frames, or having three different indicators that are telling us studies on volume, range, or volatility, we can do it all in one. We can do it all in one environment. We can look at it all in one add-on. And that was really the goal is because when we look at designing tools to be user-friendly and providing a solution, we don't like to put indicators into the marketplace or we don't like to create a product unless it solves a problem and it helps us become more efficient with our execution, more efficient with decision-making and help us become better traders. So when we talk about the gauges, let's break down the different sections. The gauge is looking at different, I guess you would say, time frame and adjustments. And what we're doing is, is we have the, it says the trend settings are adjustable. And it's important that I talk about that because everybody adjusts different periods. So depending on your per, persona, like let's say you're a scalper and you're trading on a small time frame, your micro settings might be different than your medium or your big term settings. If you're somebody that's trading slightly larger time frames, you might be increasing all of these fractals to be much larger than say an intraday scalper. So you have the ability to adjust the period so that you can look and set the time frame set settings based off of what you want them to be, based off the periodicity settings. And the, the purpose here is to understand several things. Um, we look at overbought and oversold conditions, but we also look at being able to time upcoming directional changes. And let me kind of give you an example of that. We're going to go to the next slide. I drew this, this diagram box. Let me just grab a cursor here so you guys can see exactly what we're talking about. And uh, I, th this, this, these uh, red and green sections here are not part of the indicator. I drew this with a, with a paint tool so that we can talk about teaching you why this is so important. And you notice how all the dials are over here. And I did that on purpose so that we could just, we could visualize what could happen in the market. Let's say you're looking at a, your trading time frame. Let's say you're trading on a 10 tick range bar. I'll give you an example. Okay, let's say you're trading on a 10 tick range bar. And let's say you set your small time frame to let's say it be maybe a four tick setting. Or let's say your medium time frame was set to a 10. And then let's say your large time frame was set to a 20, right? What we're doing is we're setting three different parameters. And if you're trading on, say, the fractal that is basically gauged off the medium time frame, the, the dial for the small, this dial right here, which is the small gauge, you can use this to understand what's about to happen before it happens by it moving before the, the medium time frame adjusts or the large time frame. So let's say one of these dials started to move before the other. It's telling you that things are happening internally on different time frames, and you don't need to be thinking about whether it's happening. It's showing you that. Let's say you're, you're, you're expecting uh, a directional move, you're in a trade, and then all of a sudden the big time frame shifts on the gauge. It tells us that you know potentially things can happen, and we're about to expect some major follow through. So if these gauges were to all end up, let's say, over in here somewhere, right? 
like that. Or let's say these gauges were here, here, and here. You know, we have different sections that can tell us when they're, when they're really overbought, right? So if all of these gauges were up here in this section up here, yes, the market would be bullish. It would need to be bullish because that's what happens when things become overbought. If you are extremely bearish, that's what happens when things become oversold. The neutral and the neutral section here is normally trend conti continuation environments. So when you're in a trade and you're expecting things to either go in your favor or not, if you, let's say you're trading to the long side and you've got all the dials in this gauge area here, right between this section and this section, normally you would expect trend continuations to happen, right? If you're getting ready to fade reversals and you're getting ready to short and all three gauges are up here, this can give you indication that not only are you way overextended on one time frame, you're way overextended on all time frames. And this can help you understand potential major reversals, right? Using this in conjunction for say fading market profile levels or even scalping intraday time frames, this can be very, very useful in terms of understanding how to read multiple fractals without having all your charts on your uh, your screens now. So let me kind of go, let's go into the actual um, charts for a second and let's let's just give you an example here and and I've got four examples here just tell me which one you want to look at you want to look at crude you want to look at the Nasdaq the euro or gold everybody just tell me which market out of these four I'll pick the one that everybody wants me to look at most everybody says crude oil people are saying crude oil anybody else crude okay let's take a look at crude okay so let's just do this here for a second if I go up here, you can see these gauges are, are here, okay? And let me just double check the data. Okay, I've got data, perfect. Now let's go in here. Let's just make sure we've got chart trader, volume is coming in, perfect, okay? <laughs> so as you can see now, the market is bearish. I mean, we don't need to go into, you know, downtrends and that stuff, but based off of what I've just explained to you, what do you think the, the gauges are telling us right now? What do you, what do you, what does it look like? If you take a look up here and you take a look at the directional gauge, what do you think that that <laughs> Bob wants to know, does it work on Forex? Yes, it does, Bob. Yes, it does. Um, Theo says it's oversold. Yes. And it's oversold on three, Okay, three time frames. So let me kind of just go in here for a second and go into the settings and show you exactly what we're looking at. So if I go into the barometer, I've got the short term trend period at 13, the midterm trend period at 21, and I've got the long term period at 34. These are not tick settings. These are, let's say, an average setting, so trend settings. So these are based off of a smooth, uh, a smoothed average algorithm. So it's not a time frame setting. These are our, our, our average settings. So, you know, this would be a 13 smoothed average algorithm versus a 21 versus a 34. And so you can experiment with different response times to, to adjust to your market. But basically what that means is we've got the micro, the medium, and the the uh, the the long term setting uh, based on this, right? So if I go back and I just take a look here, okay, take a look at what happened. Let's just go back up a little bit. Let's go back up a little bit. I'm just gonna just gonna go like this. Let's continue here. I just want to right there. Now, <clears throat> I just want to stop right there for a second. If we're taking a look at this uptrend. Okay, we're in an uptrend. And based off of what we're seeing, we can see that this uptrend started changing right there. You can see that we took out the low and we came up with a lower high. That is happening by us looking at this. We can see that the smaller time frames are reversing. The bigger time frame is still telling us that we are in this large uptrend, okay? But what's interesting is when the market 
kicked over. You see how the big time frame kicked over? It was just one bar like that. And then it kicked over again on the next bar, but that bar didn't even move. You can see it was a doji or it was, like a, it was a base candle, right? And then take a look at the next bar. It didn't even move again, but do you see how the gauge is responsively changing? You see how the gauge is, is basically changing sentiment. Every single bar it's updating, that gauge is dropping. Take a look here. It just keeps dropping and the market's not moving anywhere, okay? What we're, what, what we're able to do with this is we can start to see that things are about to happen. And if you take a look at where we're at in terms of the gauges, okay, this is one, two, three, four, okay. We are expected to have some type of a pop or some type of extension to the short side in a trend continuation environment. Technically, this is the forming of a new environment, right? And so the reason we call this an add-on is because it has nothing to do with, where do I get into the trade here? What, it has a lot to do with you having the ability to see what's about to happen before it happens. Okay, an explosive move down, right? A push down. Now, obviously this is news reports. I don't wanna get into that. We're not talking about that. What I wanna talk about is this pop right here that just dropped three candles in on that doji bar, not knowing what's about to happen. The market's not even moving, right? And these gauges are updating internally. And that's really what this, this product is designed to do. It's not designed to be your entire trading system. It's designed to put on your chart so that you have a massive insight to being able to give you data that you would normally never expect to have and have the ability to see it before it happens. And that's exactly why we call this the, the barometer is because it's acting like your weather gauge for things that would normally never be known to you, okay? Now I wanna go back and I wanna talk a little bit about an example uh, with regards to a breakout, okay? I wanna, I wanna give you an example uh, of a breakout. And because normally uh, breakouts may not be your strategy, but it's the exact same context of what I was just explaining is normally you would sell the top of a range and you would buy the bottom of a range, right? And normally we don't know it's a range until, we don't know it's a range until it happens, right? So by definition, most traders are gonna start wanting to buy the bottom of the range and then sell the tops of the range. So if you notice, price came down, price came up, and then price came back down again. So by definition of what we should be doing at the bottom of an oscillating market is we should be looking to buy the bottoms of an oscillating market. But if you look at what the barometer is designed to do, it's designed to give you information that you would normally not expect to know. And that's exactly what all three dials are telling us right here. Remember what I said, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. Remember what I said about two and three, these are directional areas, which means they should have some type of follow through to that direction based off of three different time frames working together. So if you notice, all three gauges are pointing to the downside. So when you ask yourself, well, which side of the range is gonna hold, right? If you're in an oscillating market, nobody knows whether we're gonna challenge the lows or the highs and we're gonna break out through that. That's exactly what this is telling me right now. This example would be telling me that the bottom of this range is expected to fail. Not knowing that, that it is or not, we have evidence through multiple time frame analysis that it is expected to fail. Now, that's exactly what I'm about to show you is that immediately it broke on the next bar. So if I go here on that bar, it, it had an explosive move down one bar after. And you can see that that's exactly what the barometer tells us before. So that if you're in a situation where you're not really sure about what the market's about to do, you can use the barometer to tell you with added evidence with many different areas of confluence. And that's why I like the term confluence for this, okay, is because we don't just rely on one subset of data. We rely on three time frames. 
to tell us that without having to have three charts, without having to have all the different timeframes and different screen real estate taking up our screens. Now we haven't even talked about the internals, which is going to add even more confluence to what we're about to show you. But I like to explain that in more detail when we get to that. Now, the, the other aspect of the timeframes is using overbought and oversold conditions. Do you notice how this barometer, and I've cut the gauges off here for the reason of, I just wanna focus on the timeframes for this example. Remember how I said we can use one time frame to tell us what the others are expected to do. Do you notice how we're in the fourth section, right? We go one, two, three, four. One and four are overbought and oversold conditions. But when we start to see that the big time frame and the medium time frame are oversold, and then we start to see the small time frame change. This is a leading indicator that the oversold condition is expected to be a reversal. So when you know when you have like a, let's say you have an RSI, right? And an RSI is coming down here and then sometimes it comes up here and then it goes like that and then it comes up here and then it goes like that. And we have these overbought and oversold conditions well, what, what this is telling us right here is that if we are overbought or oversold, this smaller time frame is our leading indication that this is expected to change because the internals on one of the time frames are supporting that internal clue, if you will, right? And, and that's kind of how we know an overbought or an oversold condition is expected to work, right? It's when you're in an overbought or oversold condition, how do we know it's going to stay overbought or oversold or if it's going to change? And, and if you take a look at exactly what took place on the next slide, this is an example of that. It, that exact same, if we look at the timestamp right here at 1233, right, 1233, the next bar, it popped up. And this is why the, 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 the gauges are so powerful is because it tells you internally before your time frame that you're trading on is about to do something, okay? And so, that's kind of exactly um, the gauges on, on the thermometer. Does everybody understand that? Give me a why if everybody kind of gets that. It, it's kind of apparent. You, it's, the example makes sense. Okay. We use the, so in summary, in summary, before we explain the add-on part, let's just go to the Renko. Let's go to Renko for a second. Okay. Let's just, let's just, I'll just, I'll just kind of explain this for a second. That in summary, I'm just going to put that. The, the small time frame is used for timing. Okay, we could use the small time frame for timing. Really good for timing your entries and also for giving you clues that we're about to get an immediate shift and the medium and the large would be expected for trend continuation or follow through, right? It's kind of like, when can you expect a trend to continue or when do you expect there to be a, a momentum involvement, okay? And so that's why you can use the directional gauge of this tool for two primary purposes. You can use it for timing, trend continuations and follow through, right? Which can be used by everyone in here in a different way, right? Some of you might be momentum and you want that follow through. Some of you guys are timing reversals and you want that intra bar information, right? You need that, that, that kind of, that extra clue that's gonna tell you that we're about to get the reversal that we need. That's what the directional gauge is designed for, okay? So, the next discussion for the barometer is ultimately the gauges and, and, and the internal gauges. And I really like this part of the, I really, I really, really, really like this part of the software because there's no subjectivity to this. This is a complete locked in algorithm. And really what it's designed to do is it's designed to exploit arbitrage opportunities. Um, and let me kind of explain this. And I know normally I don't like to write so much information on a slide, but we need to be very clear with how this is designed so you understand. Volume, volatility is the speed of the market, range is the distance. 
Volume measures participation. Volatility measures the speed. Range me measures the distance, okay? Three different internals, okay? All three of these statistical calculations are done in the same way and means that they're a locked in algorithm for the gauge. But what it's doing is that we had to code the algorithm for a normalized scale so that we can use volume range and other forms of units in an equalized environment. Because you cannot compare volume and range in the same way. You need to have them in a normalized statistical output. That's why you see volume on a scale to 100 and volume or volatility and range are 0 to 100. Uh, 200 for the volume and the other for 100. Now, the reason for that is because this has nothing to do with the amount of contracts. It has nothing to do with ticks or anything like that. It has to do with the normalized scale. Now, to the end user like yourself, it's not important. What's more important is how to use this information so that you can make trading decisions. What are we looking at, okay? Well, the goal here is whenever we see the volume, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you straight out, this is the hidden gem, okay? The hidden gem for this is whenever we see the volume get up here, around 100, even 80, Okay, whenever we see volume spike and you have volatility and range less than 20, okay, we have an opportunity to exploit arbitrage. What this is is when big money steps into the market and it hasn't impacted the movement of price. You notice how sometimes smart money moves in before the whole market ends up getting impacted. It's kind of like you get these massive volumes. Some people look at this as volume spread analysis. Some people look at this as volume studies. I call it arbitrage because we're not just using volume by itself. We're only looking at volume spikes when the market's not being affected by it because there's something going on greater than the expected movement. If you're seeing huge spikes of volume, remember these aren't contracts, this is of a normalized scale. So this could be really, really, really large impacts on volume, but yet why is the market not moving? Why has the market not moved with that influx of liquidity? Normally what ends up happening is we are going to get a pop. We are going to exploit a pop. And normally that pop is going to happen in our favor because we will then see the market react very quickly and effectively. Now, let me kind of go back to that example that I was just showing you and then we'll go into the slides and I'll show you some other examples. Let's go back to the, uh, this volume one because we were looking at it. You notice how we had uh, this trend gauge was dropping, dropping, dropping right here. And, but we were not moving. I want, I want you to just pay attention to this right here. And I want you to pay attention to this bar right here as we're coming into this market. Now remember, remember the goal of this tool is to exploit internal opportunities that are naked to the eye, meaning you've got directional sentiment and then market internals. Market internals are volume, volatility, and range. So how do we exploit that? Well, when you see bar after bar, take a look at this volume, this volume, um, this volume gauge right here. Do you see how it's getting to 80? Right up here, and I'm just gonna draw a little line here so you can see, we're, we're talking about that right there. See how it's at 80? And then all of a sudden, we're sitting there and we're not moving. But this dial keeps dropping and the market's not moving. Why is that? Th that's, that's not normal. That, that, that's, the market should be moving with, with volume and liquidity being in that factor. Plus, we have directional sentiment changing. If you take a look at the next bar, look what happened to volume. Did you see a movement in the market? I think there's a one tick difference from the open to the close of each bar. When you see this, okay, when you see this, this is about ready to pop. 
this is what we call arbitrage. So when you see these types of environments, you now have an opportunity to say, we're about to explode here. And when you say, well, which direction should the market be popping? Because technically, if you think about this, this is a rally base, rally base, rally. If you're a supply and demand trader, you would say, oh, there's a demand zone there. Oh, there's another demand zone in here. As a supply and demand trader, we should expect the market to pop out of here. Aha. Uh -huh. But just because we expect something to happen doesn't mean that's what the market's telling us is going to happen. And that's exactly why we coded this tool is to be able to tell you that even all things aside, whether your other indicators are telling you that it might be primed for an up move, I would argue the fact that we are going to do the complete opposite because we're now using arbitrage to exploit that. And that should tell us that we're about to break down. And you have no reason to look at these three bars and to be able to tell me that if this chart was not here, you would not be able to tell me that information. You'd be completely biased to an opinion rather than data. Look at that. You see the volume staying, the volatility didn't pop. That's exactly what happened. We got a breakout. The volume is, and and it works with it works with any market that you have data. It works with any market that you have data on on ninja trader it's a ninja trader add-on so if i take a look at current market volatility okay what is it telling us right now we what what are what are all three time frames telling us right now oversold and do you see how the market the volatility is above 20 so we can't use that as an arbitrage explosion. Like the volatility is creeping. It has to be below 20. Both of these have to be below 20 for that to be arbitrage. The volatility is already being impacted. If I go back one bar, let's see here. See how the volatility is up? It's, it's, there's no arbitrage here. And even the volatility did not drop below 20. So, so this is why it's really... <laughs> is the volume total volume or can the buyers and sellers? It's, it's, it's not volume. It's, it's a normalized scale of volume. So it has nothing to do with the amount of volume. It has to do with the impact of volume that is being input towards volatility and range. And that's why for me to explain the algorithm is very difficult. And, and we're, we, you'll know us in terms of the way we like to explain our tools is I like to teach you what's under the hood. If you're going to buy a sports car, you want to know the muscle that's under the hood. I'm here to tell you that the reason the scales are at 200, 100, and 100 is because you cannot use the number of contracts and compare the number of contracts against volatility and range because they're represented on two separate, separate scales. So when we had to build it, we built a normalization scale that allows us to compare the volume, volatility, and range on an equal playing field. And so that's why we use the thresholds of 80-20 to be able to exploit the arbitrage. Okay, so let me kind of go back in and give you an example on the slides. So you can see some other examples. Example here, you can see that the market is primed down. You can take a look here, we're getting we're getting, you know, the, the forecasted volume is climbing. The forecasted volatility is low. The forecasted range is low. The expect, expectation is there could be an actionable opportunity about to happen. Now, do you see here where all of the gauges are oversold? Do you see that? They're all oversold. But you also see how the smaller time frame is creeping to the other direction now. Remember how I said about overbought and oversold conditions, when you start to see the smaller time frame move in the opposing direction, when we are oversold, the expectation is the reversal is supposed to pop. When would we expect it to pop? Because look at, we're going down, we're going down, we're going down, we're going sideways, sideways, sideways. When would we expect it to pop? When we have the arbitrage, true, because that's when we can expect an unforeseen actionable opportunity that is being impacted. When it hits 80 and above for volume, but making sure the volatility is not yet impacted in the market. Boom. On the next bar, within three bars, price rallies off the lows. Okay. This is an example of the arbitrage strategy. So let me kind of explain this hidden gem here. Okay. So... I've got three markets. 
I can go to gold on a range bar. Let's take a look here. We've got a push to the upside on this bar at 1322.40. Do you see how all gauges are pushing up to the overbought condition on bullish sentiment? Now, is there arbitrage? No, there is no arbitrage. So applying the arbitrage to this environment doesn't make sense. But if I go one more bar, what's happening on the small time frame? The small time frame starting to change sentiment, which tells us that the reversal is starting to happen. Now, you might say, well, that's a doji bar, but that doesn't necessarily mean that doji bar is gonna cause the reversal. It might be just a pullback for another push up, right? Take a look at this, the doji bar down here. If we've got a doji bar down here like that, and then the next bar popped right back up. It doesn't mean anything. When we're all overbought like this, okay? You see that creep like that on the next, do you see how the other two time frames haven't moved? Okay, you see that? That's how we can expect the impact on that. Let me give you another example of where we could look at using Renko. Just another example. Let's just go to some random, let's just go to some random place so you know I'm not cherry picking trades here, okay? <laughs> when you see this, do you notice how all three gauges are over, overbought or oversold, sorry, had that reversed. Do you see how uh, at this level? Now, what's interesting is that we are at a level of support. We have all three gauges, and I just picked this as a random example because I don't trade the euro on this Renko chart. So for me, I'm just showing you that it can be used in any type of system, any type of fashion. It really depends on your tool set. We could basically add some supply and demand indicators on here. We could add some Fibonacci. We could add some overbought and oversold. You could apply the barometer to it and then look at the tool set based off the way you're trading. I'll give you an example. We've got 80, both under 20. But take a look at the gauges. We're oversold at the, the extremes in a level of support. And we have arbitrage. A guy just picked the euro on a Renko chart just randomly in any spot. It doesn't matter because when you know how to use the tool, you can apply it every way possible. Watch the small time frame. Do you see the small time frame? I'm going to delete all the drawings. What just happened? Are we still in an arbitrage opportunity? Does everybody here see it? Are we still in an arbitrage? When I say the hidden gem, this is truly a hidden gem, guys. That's why this is, this is an ultimate add-on because it, it can be applied anywhere. The arbitrage tool allows us to be able to exploit the expected move. When you see this and you don't know which way the market's going to go, you should be able to say we should see a pop to the upside rate. To have that ability on the hard right edge to say, you know what, I think we're going to pop up with evidence that supports that claim. That's exactly what we can do here on this bar. We can see that. The arbitrage is the gem. The time frames, the multiple time frames, is it's kind of like the, 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 the big player of knowing what to expect. Now, do you notice how the gauges are both in the directional sentiment continuation environment. Do you see how the big time frame, the small time frame are in that environment? We expect follow through. What happened? The market gave us follow through. See, we switched from here to neutral to there. So right here we have this bar, okay? Arbitrage is not important anymore because it already happened. The arbitrage is like exploiting an opportunity that the market doesn't know is about to happen. And that's exactly what takes place. But after that move takes place, and let's say you're here, okay? You notice how we're at a level of resistance? How can we expect this level of resistance to hold? You notice how the, the top, remember we talked about the breakout example on, remember we talked about the breakout example on the slide? We said, how do we know the breakout's gonna break out to one side of the range or the other? Because if you take a look, this is technically, this is technically a range right? 
So how do we know that this is going to fail versus this? So, so important. How do we know if this is going to break out any further? Well, I can tell you right now that we are in the trend continuation environment. And the, the thing about this is that the small time frame is not creeping this way, expecting a reversal. So if we take a look at the expectation, we should see follow through until the other time frames give us over standard conditions. Then we continue up, we continue up. What just happened right here? Look at the smaller time frame. It's creeping up. It's creeping up. What about arbitrage? What just happened? Small time frames creeping, volume spiked on the next bar. Arbitrage is now true here. Okay. Do you notice how the small time frame did not continue to creep the other way? If we go back this way, before it was going this way and then it went the other way. Do you see? Watch what happens. It went back. It's no longer expecting this to reverse. When you start to see the dial, this is so, so important. When you start to see that smaller time frame go this way and then on the next bar go back this way, if you were planning on reversal trading that, I would not be looking to take the reversal because I would want to see this continuously moving this way, which tells us the smaller time frame inside this data is breaking structure down, which is what will cause the bigger time frame to catch up after. And that's why fractal analysis becomes so difficult on when you have three or four different charts, because you're having to piece together all that time frame analysis and, oh, I got a trend here and I don't have a... Using dials is so different because we normalize it on a scale based off averages and it, it gives you that ability to just real, read the gauges. You can just read the gauges and then look for the arbitrage. Let me give you an example of just grabbing some random chart. The smaller time frame will help you. Yes, Joe is asking if the smaller time frame will help tell you if the arbitrage is expected to go long or short. It really depends on where the big gauges are too, right? Like if the big gauges are all overbought, right, oversold here, right? Do you notice how this candle closed here? Do you notice how we're all oversold? And we are now in an arbitrage opportunity. Notice how that changed. Remember how I said we were no longer in arbitrage because the volatility is up. We'll look at volatility's dropped again, but we have still continued to hold high volume. What I would really like to see right now is I would like to see this small gauge creep up just a little bit. I would really love to see this gauge creep up a little bit because that'll tell me that this arbitrage is expected to pop. And then I would expect a breakout to the upside. If this gauge kept creeping back, I would expect it to break down because that's how you read the time frames within the time frames. And the arbitrage is letting you know that we are going to get a breakout. We are about to get a pop. It is not about if, it's about which direction. The direction tells us when the pop is going to break to that direction. The gauges tell us that it's actually going to happen. That's why we call this an ultimate add-on because it truly is ultimate in terms of using it for every trading system that you have. If you're trading the market profile, if you're trading supply and demand, if you're trading anything, right? Like I could add this into, into any strategy, adjust the parameters to be responsive to your tool set. And uh, uh, Raymond says, please show CL yesterday and today on a 10 range bar as the room, the breakouts have been spectacular. Spec Specular the last few days. Be interesting to see the gauges. Sure, we can do that. Let's go in here and uh, Humberto's asking arbitrage. Arbitrage is a hidden opportunity. It's kind of like a hidden anomaly in the markets that basically we should expect something to happen because it, there's like, you, you know, it's kind of like driving on a tire. You know, you have a hole in the tire, but if you pull the nail out, is the tire going to go flat? You would expect it to go flat if you pull the nail out so you don't pull it out. <laughs> right here, we'd expect, you know, if we pull the nail out, this is going to pop up, right? And, and that's what the arbitrage is doing is the volume is telling us the story that there is a big, big, big change about to happen, but why has the market not moved? 
Well, Kurt, this is real time. This is the hard right edge on, uh, this is real, Kurt's saying, uh, can you show it in real time instead of hindsight? I, this is hard right edge on crude oil and live markets. That's why this, this webinar was done a little earlier instead of market close, because we'd like, I mean, obviously, I can go to the NASDAQ. I think the NASDAQ would be, uh, let's take a look at the NQ here. Give it a sec here. It's going to load. So we've got the NASDAQ happening in real time. Take a look right now. Do you notice how, and let, we could go in real time here. This is the NASDAQ. We have an arbitrage opportunity. So is market going higher or lower? Well, I, I just want to explain how to read the gauges effectively. Let's just take a look at the direction first. We know there's arbitrage, but take a look at the direction. The medium time frame is over oversold completely. The bigger time frame has not yet gone oversold. In fact, the bigger time frame, if we expect continuation, I would say that we're expected to continue down to some extent, and I'll explain why. Okay, if you take a look at this, we are still in that continuation environment. We have not yet become over oversold yet on the higher time frame. Yes, the smaller, the medium time frame is slightly oversold. That's where this pop came from. But if you notice, we're making lower lows and lower highs, and the higher time frame is still not yet oversold. But what's interesting is the smaller time frame is creeping the other way. So I really don't think there's an arbitrage opportunity to happen here. I would really expect the arbitrage to happen when you are completely overbought or oversold and we start to see the creep on the smaller time frame. I think if you were to ask me the best way to use this is when you've got the medium and the big picture time frame over here. Like if you've got both these gauges sitting like this, like that, and then you start to see that creep up when this arbitrage is happening, that's when we would expect it to be really the best way to do it, which is really measuring overbought and oversold conditions using multiple time frames and an arbitrage. Now, if I go back here, isn't that what happened here at the end of this trend? If you take a look at, and this is, this is why it's, it, we, we, we built this so you could go back and back test. I mean, if you take a look at the gauges, you can go back and see the gauges move on a bar by bar basis. So, you know, kind of to challenge Kurt, I don't mean to call you out, but to challenge the thinking hindsight is hindsight. Well, that's why the gauge is responsive to hindsight on a bar by bar basis. And so you can actually go back and back test how many times the arbitrage popped at those areas. And if you take a look, all the gauges are oversold or overbought. What happened on the next bar? It creeped up. Did the volatility break above 20? No. Did the other gauges move? No. Boom. The arbitrage popped. You see how the volatility spiked above 20? It's because the volatility is now impacted. The reversal is about to happen. The big, the big volume has the impact. The liquidity exchanged hands. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. As I said, I would expect us to see continuation of the downside. I would expect to see this gauge. If we're going to see this reverse to the upside, I would need to see this become oversold and this to creep up, okay? So we have questions. Can we look at crude oil on, let's take a look here. Gold's on 10 tick, let's put this over to crude oil. I'm gonna go here. Perfect, okay. So if we take a look here at this and we start taking a look at the breakout. So over here, let's just pick a range. Now to me, not really the best time. Who is it that requested the range breakout in here? We've got somebody here said, uh, Raymond, Raymond, can you tell me exactly, give me an example of a range that you were looking at in crude oil and I'll go to the time so we can take a look at it. We have a request by one of our traders who's trading crude oil on a 10 tick range bar. Yesterday's CL open. So let's just bring it to today's charts and let's go to yesterday, which was the third 29th. 
and we go down here, so 6.30, so 7 o'clock. So we're just going to just draw a little line in the sand here. And 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 7 a.m. my time. Uh, I'm on Mountain Standard Time. So let's just say right here. So you're talking about this range right here. Right there, right? Give me a yes if that's what you're talking about. This exact range right here. Okay, so there's crude oil coming into the open. Okay, coming into the open. Let me just draw some lines across the range so that you guys can see where we have a range, right? Let's just take the lines and let's just draw the, the highs of this range. Okay, just like that. And let's just draw the lows of this range. We'll just connect these lows like this. Right, let's just say that that's pretty much the opening range of crude oil. Okay, so let's just kind of go bar by bar, right, like this. In this scenario, what is the gauge is telling us? What's this gauge telling us right here? This is the medium time frame. Are we overbought or oversold on the two big time frames? No. Remember, we would not expect immediate impact to be happening on the smaller time frame unless we have overbought and oversold conditions. We would expect continuation here. Remember, the medium time frame is more closely related to the time frame in which you're trading. It's, it's uh, let me just go into the settings here for a second. So let's go back here. Let's take a look at the barometer. We're on a 13 period. So the smaller time frame would essentially be more related to the, the trading time frame. The 21 would be slight, almost double your fractal, essentially. And then if you take a look at the long term, it's 34. Well, the long term is slightly getting over, over, overbought, but if you take a look at the medium time frame, it's still in a trend continuation space in terms of the sentiment of this indicator. So we look at expectation until this gets all the way up here with this being up here i cannot expect there to be a reversal here in fact i would expect it as this is in this section right here to give us follow through because the smaller time frame does not really give us follow through sentiment the medium time frame the big time frame tell us the follow through so this is starting to move up. This one still has to come up before it becomes overbought. And so technically, this is not overbought, even though we're at the top of the range. So when we take a look at what happened here off the open, let's just go bar by bar. Do you see how the smaller time frame kicked up? The big time frame kicked up. The medium time frame is now getting overbought. Up, 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 up. Take a look at the opening range. Do you see the arbitrage happening here? Watch what happens. You see the arbitrage break off the open, and then there it goes into 20. You notice how it pops up, but watch what's happening here. I want to really spend more. Do you see that reversal? Did the smaller time frame creep? Did the smaller time frame change yet? Yes or no? No. So we don't want to get faked out. Smaller time frame change yet? No. Is the arbitrage an important part yet? No. Let's keep going. Do you see how we continued up? Wait a sec. Take a, look at the, take a look at that gauge for a second. Do you see how the gauge creeped up one tick? It's hard to see. You can change the font settings after, but take a look at the next, the next bar. It went back. This would be if you're trying to fade that reversal. Remember how I said if it goes up and then creeps back, be careful. Let's wait for it. Creeped back again. Let's continue. Wait for this over overbought condition. What about right there? Do you see how it started to creep? Okay. Let's just go back one. Do you see how the arbitrage is here? Take a look at the volume spike. On the next bar, we got the creep. The arbitrage is starting to impact in the market. Oh, Jesus, here we go. Let's go back here. Let's go back here for a second. Right here, okay. And it creeped here. Now watch the dials for a second. Watch the dials. Watch how it creeped back up. Do you see how it creeped back up? If you were fading this and it did that, I would close the position. I would get in and get out. I would exit immediately because it's expected to be 
to not impact. We have to see the smaller time frame continuously move in the direction of our trade on these types of reversals. So let's give an example. Right here, do you see how it came back down? Watch what happened. Crip back up. Watch what happened. The arbitrage broke back up. Let's continue down here. What about right here? Let's go back right here. Right there. What about right there, guys? Do you see the do you see the the creep? And let's take a look at the next bar. Oh, okay. Now you see where I'm going with this. It's using the internal data to keep you out of fading reversals that could potentially just continue to go. It's about understanding how the breakout was expected to continue on a trend continuation because the medium time frame is still not in overbought condition. The arbitrage is only useful when things are lining up. So if you're getting an arbitrage but nothing else is really important, well then the arbitrage is not important. You wanna use, and this is a really good food for thought, I'm going to write this as a text here for a second. So use arbitrage at areas of interest. So what is an area of interest? Well, an area of interest equals maybe a market profile level, maybe an SD volume zone, maybe a FIB, maybe an order flow signal, right? When you start using your systems, and this is why it's an ultimate add-on, because everybody in here may be using different tools, okay? If you're using any other tool and you wanna see how it, it collaborates with that tool, okay? You can do that. Let me grab an example. connection and hopefully my support doesn't get upset with me on the uh, <laughs> let's just do this here for a second I'm just going to put like a 50 tick range bar okay and we're going to go here to this is like a five tick range bar on the, the Euro. Okay, and uh, give it a sec here as we wait for the data to load. I should have data and give me a second. I'm trying to load the Forex, so we'll, we'll try it here. And don't know if I have data for it. I thought I had data for Forex, guys, so let's just keep that clean and uh, consistent. Let's just try that. I don't think I have Forex data, so we'll just um, disconnect, and I will look at disconnecting here, and I will look at connecting. Let's try that, and... I don't think I have data for Forex guys on my connections. So I was going to try to show you a Forex example. I'm going to try just a futures example instead. So I'm just going to close out the Forex and we'll, uh, we'll use that and we'll use futures instead, guys. I, I wanted to accommodate the, uh, the Forex traders in here and hopefully, uh, hopefully be able to have, I don't have a data feed for that. And I think, I think our, our, our programmers uh, change that and uh, we'll just load the futures back up. Okay, so give me a sec here, and let's do that. Perfect. So we'll go in here, and we'll perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is is I'm going to uh, let me see. Got a couple questions here. <laughs> um, suppose we are looking at a 30 minute bar in raw CPO. It will help see what's happening internally to the bar. Yeah, exactly. So let's let's give an example here, guys. Let's give an example here. So I'm going to go in here to a chart, and I'm going to just grab a, let's just grab a, a chart of, I'll grab the euro because the euro loads a lot faster for me because it's less tick data, 30. Let's just do that. Let's just load a 30-minute chart of this market. Interesting. We had a huge news announcement today. 
Okay, so let's go in here and that. I'm gonna just add market profile software. And this is just to show you an example of what we're doing here. Okay, so I'm just gonna load market profile software. And I'm also gonna add the barometer to it. Okay, so we'll give it a second here. <laughs> Got to let the software load, let it calculate tick data, okay? And this can be moved, right? So you can move that. So let's go in here and just take a look at hybrid. Now, one thing I want to point out here for a second is we're going to put on the zones and some levels down here, okay? And let's just say we want to basically go in here and find a level in which we were looking to trade, right? Well, this clearly was a level down here. Uh, I'm just going to just highlight that for a second and, and let's go down here for a second okay so one of the things to understand about or we could just grab this one here it doesn't matter which one we want this one's probably more tradable because this one came down to the tick so let's just do this right this one came in here and by by definition you're buying low and selling high in in, in areas like this so if we're looking at trading uh, a level uh for buying and selling, right? Like if we're getting ready to buy that, that ARB level and take a position long in these reversal levels, and that's one of the trades that we would take in the trading room by definition, right? Then, then, then really what we would do is how can we use the add-on to our advantage? Well, remember this is a 30 minute time frame. So one thing you're going to need to do because everybody is different with regards to the strategies in which they trade. So one of the things that is going to take a little bit of, of understanding is that you may need to adjust these parameters. You may need to, to make these larger, right? You may need to make this a 34 and this a 60, 61 or something like that, right? Like you notice how these are Fibonacci numbers, right? These are just examples. So if I were to basically want to maybe put this as a, you know, a 34 and this one as a, 61 and then this one has a uh, you know a 73 i believe it is or, or or whatever the case may be we could change that right i don't know how it's going to affect it right i don't really know how it's going to affect it it could completely change the spectrum right and if you take a look like it might be too large like to me that would not make sense to have those settings if i can see that we are trading down on a big time frame but yet these are still up here that to me it's too large and that's where we would want to be able to adjust the indicator to, let's say, winning trades. If you went into the winning setups and you were able to tweak the settings on this to be able to accommodate the right parameters, that's how you would adjust the add-on to the, to the system. And that's exactly what I would encourage anybody to do, right? I would encourage this to maybe be a 13. And let's just try, let's go back to 21 and a 34. And I'll just keep it at what we had it set at just for the definition. But let's give you an example. Okay. And, and, and the reason I'm being very transparent about that is because we don't know the add-on and how it's going to be applied to every strategy. We know that it's going to work the way it's designed, but I don't know what you're trading. You know, you might be trading reversals. You might be trading tick charts. You might be trading candlestick charts. You might be in our trading room or you might not. You might be trading options on a different platform and you're using this as, you know what I mean? Like it's really dependent on your, you, you as a trader. But I can tell you right now as price came into this area, look what happened. I would disagree, Joe's. It does not, it does not take a lot to tweak the settings. No, there's only three parameters. Uh, I mean, maybe to the inexperienced trader or to somebody that doesn't understand their charts, but to somebody that is, is understanding that, you know, if you're, if you're in an area of a trade in which you would look to take and the trade worked, I would adjust the settings to be able to see the dials accommodate that based off what I've explained, right? So let's go in here for a second, like that. You notice how we're, 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 we're pushing up a little bit here, right? You notice how these are still all overbought, right? Okay, but take a look, it came right back down. Okay, see how this is all sitting on the same area? Do you notice how the dials aren't moving, right? Right, you might need to tweak it a little bit, right? Might need to tweak it a little bit, right? You notice how the dials aren't moving from bar to bar here? It might be the settings are too strong. You see that? They're just barely, barely moving. Okay, this means that the settings would need to be adjusted for this area. If we were to go in here and, and take a look, let's go back one more bar right there. 
Do you notice how that happened too late? Do you notice how we were here and then it popped and that, that adjustment went too late? That tells me the settings are too large. Right, that would mean we would need to make this more responsive. So we would go down and we would basically tweak this a little bit. Let's say we put this as a five. Let's say we put this as a 13. Let's say we put this as a 21. Let's try that. All right, let's go back into it. Let it calculate the data. Interesting. Price came in. Do you see how this is interesting here. Let's go back here like this. You notice how price came down. We're in a trend continuation environment. We got a little bit of a reaction and then all of a sudden we broke down. Do you notice how the smaller time frame stayed up? What's happening? Both two time frames are becoming oversold. Okay. The smaller time frame still stayed up. Okay. That's an indication that we should be able to get and then it came back down. But do you notice how the smaller time frame is now creeping up again? I still think that this would need a little bit more tweaking. Right? And it's really dependent on your levels. Now, the euro might not be a great example if that's not the market you're trading. But, you know, take a look right here. This is a great example. Right here that this started to creep the other way, just like we explained it. Okay. And then basically it popped up like that. Now, that's an exact example of how this became oversold. Now, do you notice the lag on these dials on the 30-minute time frame? You notice how the lag is there on the 30-minute time frame? That means we would need to go in and actually adjust these settings to be responsive to the 30-minute time frame. Do you notice how well they were being responsive on the smaller time frames? So I'll give an example. Like when I was looking at this example over here, I'm just going to close this out and show you an example here. If we're taking a look, let's say at a 2,500 volume or a 10 tick range bar or a, a five brick Renko, the reason I know they're super responsive on this is because we spent a lot of time adjusting the parameters to work for intraday trading charts for scalping. And originally, if you're going to be trading it on higher time frame charts, like 30 minutes or above, then we would need to spend a little bit of time adjusting it for that parameter, right? We would also be able to adjust the volatility sensitivity, right? And, and you can increase this to make it more responsive or less responsive. Uh, that type of thing is also a factor. And, and, um, you notice how the volatility threshold for the arbitrage, we have what we consider, um, what we did was we have the ability to set an alert. So let's say you want to be alerted when arbitrage is happening. You could basically set an alert when the arbitrage is taking place and you can look on your chart to see exactly where you are at the levels and to be able to identify if it's an actual trading opportunity. Because you're going to have arbitrage in different spots, but I would really encourage you to use it only at the right times. Right? If you're, if you're looking at arbitrage, it needs to be applied in the right locations at the right time. Does that kind of make sense, traders? Take a look at what just happened off the close. Let's go back here. <laughs> this is so cool, man, because we were up here, remember? Like we were sitting right here and I said, we should expect the market to, we're making lower lows and lower highs. We came in, take a look what happened here. We became oversold, both dials. And then on the next bar, look what happened the smaller time frame creeped up, right? And then look at the arbitrage, okay? Now I want you to pay attention to what's happening on the dials. Do you see how the internal dials of the smaller time frame went completely overbought? But what happened on these two big dials? Tell me what your expectation would be. What would your expectation be if you can see that we are in a trend line, okay? And you see that these are in what area? Continuation, trend continuation. What would your expectation be here? Down, Christian says. Why down? Because the two big time frames are telling you down. The small time frame is going to be responsive all the time. It's going to be because it's happening inside these bars, right? The small time frame is going to be a lot more re sporadic. 
these two big dials tell us a lot about the expected follow through of the market. And, and so when we see this, right, let's go bar by bar. Let's watch what happens. Look at this. We go back on this bar right here. Got a new spike going into the close, okay? You see that all of them are overbought or oversold, sorry. And then all of a sudden, the small time frame spikes up, okay? You can see how the dials work inside of each other. Now, I would really encourage for those of you that are interested in using this type of a tool to realize that it's like any indicator. It's not meant to be your primary system. It's meant to enhance your decision making by giving you a data lens inside the data. No different than order flow traders use order flow to enhance their decision making at areas of interest. I really think that if used correctly, this can add a superior advantage to your decision making because the goal of this is to give you an inside look at arbitrage, which is never going to be done by any other tool you use, I can assure you that. And it's also going to give you the ability to adjust multi time frame components to be responsive to the time frames that you're trading on. Okay. Now, if you have questions on, you know, what time frames to set, I would really encourage you to mark up your trade setups, go back and tweak the three settings to be able to identify when those changes are being most responsive because that's going to be the sweet spot for your tools, okay? And the reason we can't put a cookie cutter number in is because everybody's trading different systems. Everybody's trading different strategies or even different timeframes. So for us to be able to just say it must be used like this, that's not the way it was designed. It was designed to be flexible for all traders. So it could be used properly for every strategy. And that's why it's called an add-on. Okay. So did you guys learn something from that? Is it, you know, information wise, did you enjoy it? Was it something that you found that it was new information? And, and I know you guys had, you know, I, I, I wanted to show some Forex and I, I wanted to show some, some information on other markets. I don't have the data feed connected, um, uh, being able to do that. But uh, did you guys enjoy that? For those of you that are new or, or just getting uh, familiar with that, Hopefully you found that informative. I got a couple things I want to share with you guys before we, we uh, carry on here. Um, I want to give you this link on our website just so you understand where you can go and get more details on it. Uh, that's the main page on the website for the details. When you buy the software, <laughs> use it works on any, Eve wants to know, do you know if NinjaTrader can this run? If you don't have NinjaTrader, can this run on other platforms? No, it's NinjaTrader. The software is designed for Ninja. Ninja promotes the custom functions of this. It's uh, the design of the, the tool sets are built on Ninja. Now, you could use this as uh, on the platform download, and you can set up a SIM account with Ninja and then trade on other platforms if you choose. Um, but that would need to be, you would need a... Um, you would need a Ninja platform download. Um, I want to give you guys uh, an insight as to what happens when you buy our software so you know what comes with. We have this available for Ninja 7 and Ninja 8, okay? And ultimately, we have uh, user manuals and instruction videos, licensing instructions, video training on the tool. Uh, you can see that there's, there's user manuals here as well. Um, the user manual is, is, is quite extensive, so you'll be able to access that as well. Uh, there, are, um, there are guest passes available for our trading room, so if you're interested in joining us next week for a guest pass on our trade room, here's a link for that. Okay, so that's basically if you want to join in one of our trading rooms. If you're new to, to us, that's great. If you're somebody that would like a demo on this and you're saying, listen, I want to check out my timeframes, I want to check out my markets, and I didn't get a chance to cover them, you can set up a demo. There's a link for this, this demo here. Okay, so there's definitely a demo there. Can you guys uh, see that? Um, and uh, let me just grab this. I'm going to basically put the guest pass and book a demo here. Let's do that. I'll just put these in the chat box right there. There it is. There's the guest pass and book a demo links in the chat box for you as well. And uh, I just want to basically go over the cost of the software and so that you guys get an understanding of everything that comes with it.